Hello YouTube, it's Supernova, and today we're looking at laser guided bombs in Falcon 4 BMS. Laser guided bombs were first battle tested during Operation Linebacker in 1972 when 12 F 4 Phantoms from the Ubon Air Base in Thailand attacked the bridge at Phan Ho. Eight of them carried laser guided bombs, and it was a hit from a 3,000 pound bomb that dropped half the span, proving the concept and reducing the accuracy of bombs from hundreds to tens of feet. Today we're going to be using Paveway 2 bombs, Paveway being an umbrella term for laser guided munitions and precision avionic systems, and our target will be the Pulpori Naval Base in North Korea. First we need to do some pre-mission planning. To view information on the target, right click Steer Point 7 and select Recon from the list. We're now looking at a view of the target area. For more information on the Pulpuri Naval Base, left click its name to expand the target list and scroll down to view the individual targets located there, listed highest priority first. Select the yellow loading crane from the list. Click the right arrow next to designate as TRG steer point number to increase the number to the same as the desired steer point, which is 7, and then click accept. The yellow crane is now the desired mean point of impact, or DMPI. Use the camera controls on the right to view the target area as we'll be approaching it. Then view the loadout to confirm we're equipped with four GBU-12 Paveway 2 500-pound bombs and an an aaq 14 targeting pod, or TGP, which contains a laser designator rangefinder for precision delivery of laser-guided munitions and a forward-looking infrared sensor. Also note that the laser weapon code is 1688. Mission planning complete, we'll move on to the attack itself. Ensure master arm is set to arm and that master mode is set to air to ground. To enter TGP mode, press OSB 14 on the left MFD to view options and then press OSB 19. The targeting pod is in standby mode. To make it active, press OSB 1, then to select air to ground mode, press OSB 6. The TGP is now looking at the currently active steer point, steer point 6. To view the meter stick distance and north pointer, enter the control page by pressing OSB 5, then press OSB 19. Press OSB 5 to exit the control page. The TGP cross is in the centre of the MFD. The meter stick distance is displayed to its right and is the distance in meters of the length of each of the four lines of the TGP cross. The north pointer is an arrow located in the upper right which indicates north as viewed by the TGP. If the SMS page isn't already active on the right MFD, press OSB 14 to view it. Verify that GBU-12 bombs with single release and a standard arming delay have been set. Return the right MFD to the HSD page by pressing OSB 13. Now we need to confirm some of the laser details. To view the UFC laser page on the DED, press list on the ICP, then enter 0 and then 5. Check that TGP code is set to our assigned laser code, which is 1688. It's important that we set the air to ground laser to combat mode, or CMBT. Select the A-G laser line and press any ICP key to toggle it. After flashing for a few moments, the mode will be selected. Finally, verify that the laser time is set to 16 seconds. This will fire the laser 16 seconds before the predicted impact for final guidance. Set the laser switch on the miscellaneous panel to arm. 
As we're approaching steer point 6, we'll switch to steer point 7 and turn onto a heading of approximately 256 degrees. You can verify laser status in the TGP and on the hood near the master arm indication. A solid L means that the laser is armed, while a flashing L indicates that the laser is firing. If a T is displayed, it means the laser is armed or firing in training mode. You can manually range the target by depressing the first stage trigger, by default set to control and forward slash. The benefit of manually ranging, besides improving accuracy, is to check correct laser operation and that the target is not obscured by clouds. Select the TGP page on the left MFD. If the TGP is not Centre of Interest or SOI, the words Not SOI will be displayed on the TGP page. Press Display Management Switch or DMS Down to make it SOI. If the TGP is not SOI, the laser will not fire. The brackets on the TGP page are the narrow field of view brackets and indicate the area magnified in narrow field of view. The range to the TGP cursor is shown towards the bottom left. A T in front of it indicates that the laser is passively ranging the target. An L indicates that the laser is actively ranging. You can toggle the three available display options, White Hot, Black Hot and TV with OSB6. White Hot and Black Hot are infrared and can be used day or night, while TV is a daylight mode offering a greater zoom capability using the throttle's manual range knob. When we pickle the bombs, in other words, when we press and hold down the weapon release button to authorise weapon release, the L on the hood and TGP page will flash, and for a brief period while the button is down, the laser will fire to range the target. The flashing L only confirms that the laser is firing. It does not guarantee that the weapon will guide. As we're not lofting the bomb, we ignore the first CCRP release queue and release one GBU-12 on the level release queue, then add roll trim to the aircraft to maintain level flight. To change the TGP field of view from white and arrow, press OSB3. With the bomb released, adjust the TGP cursors using the keyboard shift arrow keys by default to refine the impact point on the loading crane. When satisfied with the aim point, press TMS up to designate it using point track mode, which tracks single objects with well-defined edges, e.g. vehicles and some buildings. If the target cannot be point tracked because the target does not have sufficient detail, the TGP will default to area track mode. If slewing is commanded when in point track mode, the TGP will drop the track and then try to reacquire point track once the slewing stops. If the TGP cannot maintain point track because line of sight to the target is blocked, it will switch to area or INR track mode until the aim point is designated again. Note that as the TGP is located on the right chin position, a right turn may mask the TGP against the airframe. If it does so, the word mask will appear on the hood adjacent to the FPM, and the letter M will appear to the right of the L or T in the bottom right of the TGP page. When the condition is approaching, the text will flash. It will remain steady when masked. After impact, brake track with TMS aft and return the TGP to the FCR page. As always, like, comment and subscribe if you found that useful. And I hope to see you again for the next Falcon 4 BMS video.